Good morning, folks. A brief announcement to get us started. If you took photos at Observing the Frontier in Phoenix this past weekend, or you were recording audio or any video, etc., it's time to start putting the presentations together, so please send them along if you could. Okay, enough house cleaning. Let's go to space weather news and check in on our star. The sunspot number surged to over 100, no less than 10 plasma filaments gracing the Earth-facing disk. Small pops can be seen across our star, and it would appear that eruptive activity is on the precipice of delivering major CMEs. And yet, we have no heliospheric disruptions, no significant Earth-directed ejecta, and when we come to the X-ray flux, we see that solar flaring ticks upward only to meet a wall well below the M-class range. The sunspots began decaying overnight, except for that central group. We've got hints of magnetic interaction, both departing and incoming, but nothing to highlight as being dangerous. The central grouping, however, is another story. Gamma-class magnetism is held as blue-positive umbras are split by the negative. Further central development could result in a delta-class rating for that group. Please note. The central coronal hole facing Earth, dark patch, and 211 angstroms. Add to that, the central grouping is holding tight with its umbral magnetic fields, while the brightest fields are actually over on the left incoming. That's due to there being so many tiny umbras there. Well, let's use these two to do a full disk analysis. Zero is center disk, dark patch in the middle of the coronal hole. You see the brightness at negative 90 on the incoming limb to the left of Earth's view, opposite side of the sun at 180 with coronal holes and sunspots, and finally the newly departed sunspot groups at the 90 mark having just disappeared. Back to zero. Solar wind speed in yellow is slowly ticking upward, but the lack of rapid or drastic changes to the stream is leaving Earth's magnetic field well able to handle it. Let's see if the speed goes up anymore. Top quake of the day was in the Congo, and while this area usually does not lend itself to OLR analysis, see northern Africa on the left with virtually no anomalies while the south has a strong mix of positive and negative. We've also had three small quakes where Maine meets Canada in the last three days. Nothing scary but a small uptick for the general area. Top news articles includes Hurricane Patricia, which was already the strongest hurricane ever recorded, actually had its pressure intensity and its wind speed upgraded, extending its record-breaking stats even more. Earth Observatory with a thermal look at Mount Erebus in Antarctica, Lava Lake in the middle. For those who'd like a fascinating intellectual diatribe on the reality of time and free will, I would strongly advise you enjoy reading this paper linked below. And last but not least, let's demonstrate why it's vital to do one's homework outside of an article headline. So the U.S. Southwest is supposed to be getting drier, eh? Well, I'd advise you to compare their modeled 35 years of data against the hundreds of years of observed data and models presented in last night's Deeper Look episode, episode 10. It's India that's set to get dry. The U.S. desert? Probably going to go the other way. A reminder, our official Facebook page is for the Mobile Observatory Project. It looks like this. My wife was doing giveaways last night, and it looks like there are still some left. Head on over. Look for that photo as the header. And if for some reason you want the internet to know that you and I are friends as well, my personal page looks like this with little Typhoon Kira as the photo icon. We've got your pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's a little after 6 a.m. in the east. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.